Hi, everyone. I'm Shobana, and I'm from Uti. In fact, both sides of my family have been here for five generations in the Nilgiris. Yes, I know I'm lucky. In fact, if I had 100 rupees for every time everyone asked me, do you know how lucky you are? I'd be a happy person. My grandfather and I shared a very special bond. Tata, as I called him, was the best at telling stories. His stories were mostly true, but there was a healthy dose of fiction thrown in there for effect. Tata often took us kids on walks into the woods below our family home in Kuno. And on one of these walks, he told me about the secret magical plant that he had discovered at the bottom of the hill that could turn silver into gold. You can imagine my excitement. I came back home with my pockets filled with leaves. I followed Tata's uh, uh, instructions diligently, crushed the leaves, applied the juices you know, generously to a silver anklet, and then I waited with bated breath to become richer than I'd ever imagined. Long story short, the anklet definitely turned yellow, but it definitely didn't turn into gold. So my one shot at alchemy was a complete failure, and my dreams were dashed. This brings us to the sus in sustainability, because I learned after this experience, this was my first lesson in gullibility. I realized that if anything sounded too good to be true, it probably was something I should reconsider, right? And I also, realize that not everyone who has influence can be always believed. So, do we think that's us often enough when we hear of solutions, sustainability solutions, that sound too good to be true? The stakes are too high right now for us to buy or use something that we don't completely understand. We, humanity, made that mistake with plastics already. This material, which was so versatile and had so many useful properties, is such a big problem today, only because we didn't completely understand the material before starting to indiscriminate, indiscriminately use it. Single-use plastics have caused havoc. They have caused immense environmental damage everywhere. Let's look at what happened in Uti. Growing up, my parents would take us on picnics every other weekend. And Uti was pristine. It was beautiful. And at these picnic spots, our only other companions were local fishermen. I know, difficult to imagine a picnic spot without tourists these days in Uti, right? So, when I moved away from Uti for a few years for college, and then I got married, and then I came back, I went back to visit my favorite picnic spot where we went most often, a place called Sandy Nala, in 2012. And this is what I found. I was so shocked and completely heartbroken. I could see where all the single-use plastic that was being disposed upstream was finally ending up. And yes, those are fishermen fishing in that pool of plastic. Similar scenes met me everywhere I turned in Uti. The Nilgiris is part of the Nilgiris Biosphere Reserve, which was the first reserve to be established in India. It is known for its rich biodiversity and is home to several endemic species. We've got a rich wealth of flora and fauna. And these endemic species you cannot find anywhere else in the world. And many of them are critically endangered. I was deeply worried and concerned about the impact that littering would have on our fragile and special ecosystem, and also on my children's future and their health. What kind of world were my children going to inherit? So every carelessly disposed chips packet or paper cup could suffocate a nilgiri Shola Kili, a Nilgiri long-tailed mouse, or the Nilgiri's wart frog, all of which look very small and insignificant, 
but are, which are very, very important to the whole ecosystem. And all of them are on the IUCN red list. So this moved me to take action. We formed a citizens group, action group, called the Make Uti Beautiful Project, or the mob, as we're fondly called. Sustained citizen activism led to many changes. One result was a government ban on 19 different types of single-use plastic. This happened in 2018. The success of the ban can be attributed to the involvement of citizens in its enforcement. So although this ban exists everywhere here, it is very, very well enforced. However, once the ban came into place, the government felt that it had to come up with alternatives for these single-use plastics. This was when I was first introduced to bioplastics. I was, I have to admit, I was very excited when I first heard of them. They fee seemed like a wonderful solution. Manufacturers told me that I could feed these plastics to cows or I could dissolve them in water and drink the water. I was like, wow, this material is going to solve all our plastic pro uh, pollution problems. Obviously, others also thought the way I did because the global bioplastics market has been growing at an exponential rate. The Indian bioplastics market has been growing at an even faster rate. We have a projected uh, compound annual growth rate of 24% for the next five years. But luckily, because it sounded too good to be true, thanks to my tata and the lesson I learned, I investigated further. I learned that while bioplastics sounds eco-friendly, the meaning is actually quite ambiguous. It could mean that the material is either plant-based, made in part or wholly from organic matter, biodegradable, which we all know what it means, or both plant-based and biodegradable. But here's the catch. Plant-based bioplastics are not necessarily biodegradable. And biodegradable bioplastics could be made entirely of fossil fuels. Yeah, I was shocked. And they can also have undeclared additives and fillers, which are not safe for the environment. So in a classic case of greenwashing, what was happening was that manufacturers were using bioplastics in order to look environmentally responsible and to woo consumers. And consumers were using bioplastics to feel good about themselves without actually having to go through the pain of remembering to carry a reusable. After all, it's much easier to buy a eco-friendly disposable than to remember to carry a reusable bottle or bag. So, but most worrying was that bioplastics are, you know, most people think that they are inherently biodegradable. And so this could lead to improper disposal, leading to environmental harm, and also the contamination of existing recycling streams. So since it was clear to us that single-use bioplastics were not going to reduce litter in any way, and since they behave a lot like plastics, the Nilgiri set a precedent by refusing to allow bioplastics into the district. So what can we do if we don't want to use both single-use plastics and bioplastics? What choices do we have? Well, first, we can go back to our roots. We can reuse like our grandparents did. Simple, difficult, but simple. Second, despite the very long list of items banned in the Neil Grease, there is still a lot of plastic floating around here. Most of this comes from our day-to-day -day shopping. So to reduce this waste, we can make zero-waste stores more accessible and available. What we've been doing is trying to encourage private grocery stores, popular grocery stores in the Neil Grease to also offer zero-waste options. Also, third, citizens and policymakers can work together 
to make municipal and farmers market which already markets which already exist in all small towns which are already used by many people which already offer package free bulk shopping we can make these more accessible better designed more hygienic and so make zero waste shopping mainstream not something that only some can afford to do and for all those packaged products that are so difficult to avoid in this modern world let's start demanding extended manufacturer responsibility so what does this mean a buyback program for the packaging of fast moving consumer goods like your chips and your biscuit packets the litter that we generally find all over the place so this will incentivize the collection of non recyclable low value packaging materials the collection of them for either upcycling or recycling for example the buyback of tasmac liquor bottles in the neil grease which again was a result of citizen activism has proven that when value is attached to any kind of packaging the packaging will be collected finally let's remember to take our children to go look for magic plants so they can get up close and personal with nature and grow up living sustainably rather than just talking about it they'll grow up to be her stewards thank you